Hello uh, friends, I'm Dr. Sunil Bhatt here. I'm the Director and Clinical Lead of Periodic Hematology Oncology and Bone Marrow Transplantation at the Nara University, Bangalore. Um, we have been doing this series on thalassemia major. Um, this is my third short video on the bone marrow transplantation in thalassemia major. We have discussed two important aspects, donor as well as pre-transplant preparation. Now today, we're gonna to be talking about what the transplant you know, is going to be like for the patient and the families. So the transplant, when we have selected a donor, whether it's a full match, whether it's a half match, whether it's a family donor, unrelated donor, we also counsel the family, talk to them about the potential problems and the preparation before transplantation. Then we make the arrangements for the patient to be admitted for the transplant per se. Now this transplant, before we admit them, we make sure that the patient is well, they don't have any infections, which can be problematic during transplantation. You know, their organ functions are okay, their heart is okay, their dental is okay, their lungs are okay. All of that is done as a pre part of pre-transplant preparation and, and evaluation. The second is the donor. We also need to make sure the donor is healthy, donor doesn't get any infections, anything which can be transmitted to the patient, their organ functions are okay, and it's not going to be harmful for them to donate or even they should not transmit something to the patient. So when all that is done, we are satisfied with all this. We admit the patient for the transplantation. Now the transplant, we I basically divide into four phases. First phase is what's called as conditioning or in layman language it's called as chemotherapy. What happens in this phase, which lasts for six to eight days is that the patients get a cocktail of chemotherapy or drugs which are called as conditioning drugs. The idea of these drugs is to destroy the bone marrow of the patient. So that is phase one. Second phase would be the giving the cells from the donor, which is the transplant day or the activity of the transplantation. The third phase is what we call as period of low blood counts or period of aplasia when the new cells have not started working yet and the patient has got low blood counts. The fourth phase is going to be period of recovery from the transplantation. So going in one by one. First phase, as I said, is conditioning. So during this conditioning, what we do is that we give them six to eight days of drugs, medicines, which are given through IV line. For all the patients, we put a central line, either it's called a Hickman line or a chemo port or a PIC line. And these lines are used for giving these medications to the patient and they last for, as I said, six to eight days. The idea of these medications is to destroy the bone marrow of the patient completely. Now, these drugs these days are well tolerated. You don't have any major problem during this phase. But yes, some of them may have side effects, especially of vomiting. Um, you know, some may have, uh, you know, uh, toxicities, especially with regards to heart. You know, you may have uh, fever, rashes with some of the medications. But there, those are the sounds which are can be easily tackled and not have a huge concern. Once the condition is over, the patient then undergoes a transplant. And transplant is ex actually giving the cells of the donor to the patient. Now, who's of the donor is a related, unrelated donor, whether cells have been collected from the vein, which is called as peripheral stem cell collection, or they have collected from the bone marrow, which is called as bone marrow harvest. These cells are given to the patient, but the infusion of the cells is like a blood transfusion. It goes again into the vein. So there's no surgery involved to the patient. It will be an infusion like a blood transfusion. It will take, depending on how many cells you're giving or what, it may range from one hour to four hour. It's the whole infusion. Uh, may last and these are the cells which are given to the patient. Now once we are given these cells to the patient then then the third phase sets in and that's the phase which is the, probably the most difficult phase. Why? Because we have destroyed the bone marrow of the patient. The new cells have been given from the donor but they have not started working yet. So the patient is not making any blood at that point of time. The bone marrow is not functioning. His hemoglobin is low, white cell count is low, platelet count is low, and we are giving these from outside. We can give hemoglobin from outside like a blood transfusion. We can give platelet from outside like a platelet transfusion. The white cells are very important as cells in the body, and they remain low for next almost two weeks. And that's why this patient during this phase are very, very high risk of infections. And that is why during this phase, they're kept in special bone marrow transplant units, which are HEPA filter, the food comes in is UV irradiated, air which they breathe is filtered so that they don't carry get an infection from outside. The nurses are very, very trained. There's one is to one nursing and special precautions for infection prevention. And the, there can be other things which can happen during this phase. 
patients which can sometimes develop mouth ulcers, tummy ulcers, which can be painful. They may not be able to eat properly. They may not be able to, may be vomiting. They may be you know, passing a lot of loose stools. And during that phase, we support them either with the tube feeding or sometimes we give also something called as total parental nutrition from the, from the central line, which helps their nutrition to be going. Right. Third is, you know, infection risk and fever invariably comes during this phase. And we always put them on antibiotics, take blood cultures and look after infections. Now, this fever, mucositis or the pain to various degrees, you know, this question of giving blood products later on during this phase is kind of universal. All the patients will have this problem or not eating, some vomiting, some loose motion happens in each and every patient. But some patients may develop other complications, which can be any and every organ in the body. They may have complications in the brain, they may have complications in the lungs, they may have complications in the liver, they may have complications in the kidneys. And we keep on checking these on a frequent intervals so that we can identify them early and address them. This period, which is very critical, as I said, lasts for approximately two to sometimes three weeks also when the blood has not been started making, the new marrow has not started working yet. After two to three weeks, the new cells which come from the donor, they start working and that's called as engraftment. So white cells improve first, then the platelets improve and then the hemoglobin improves in that order. Usually, most of the times, it you know, happens in that order. And what when that happens, things start getting better. These ulcers start getting better. The vomiting starts getting better. The loose motion start getting better. Fevers, if they're there, they start getting better. And the next four to five, six days, their bone, this, these new blood cells start working and they come to normal levels. And when they come to the normal levels, that's the time when we discharge them from the hospital to home. And then they come out on, on a follow-up after that. So this is approximately a one month of admission to the hospital on average. It can be longer if there's any complications. It can be shorter if the recovery has been pretty smooth. And these are the various phases of the transplantation. And, you know, we need to know as a doctor, as a, as a family, as a, as a patient, what all is expected during these phases. And this should be explained to the families in great detail because it's very important for them to be mentally and physically prepared for what all is expected during this, during this one month of transplantation when they're admitted to the hospital. So. We always hope and pray that the new cells which are coming up in two to three weeks time are from the donor because that's what we want. We want the donor cells to start kicking in and, and start multiplying in the patient's body. And when they do it, you know, everyone is happy, patients are happy, we are happy and, you know, uh, things usually start getting after that. So that's what a one month of journey during the transplant for a thalassemia patient would look like. Thank you very much.